What's up, glitches? In today's video, we're gonna start off with a story called E.T. Is That You? Which I'm very intrigued about. And then we're gonna read nine more weird, unexplainable stories sent in by fans. So sit back, grab a snack, and let's get weird. Hi, Auntie. Hi. Long story, so I will get right into it. This series of events started in November of 2017. Before I get into the story, I want to set the scene. We live on a few small acres on the edge of town. Across the street to the left of us sits three houses, two of which are abandoned. The last one is occupied by a sweet old lady. We keep an eye out to make sure no one messes around her house. The three houses are intermingled with many acres of deep, dark woods. It sounds scary when you say it like that. In early November, we started noticing our two great Pyrenees acting strangely. Every day they would sit in the same part of the yard and bark at the woods, whine, and then lay down and just stare at the woods watching. The barking is nothing new, but the whining while fixated on a single point was. I didn't put much thought into it other than that it was weird. A couple of weeks later, my husband was away for work. Saturday night slash Sunday morning, I was suddenly awoken in the middle of the night. I laid there wide awake trying to figure out what woke me up. The back of my hand was up against the cold glass of the window behind the bed. As I listened to the sounds of the house, I heard a very loud sound come from outside. It sounded like a jet taking off right next to my house. The glass, real glass, that my hand was still up against flexed inward. My brain, unable to make sense of what happened, decided I was obviously still sleeping. I wasn't. A couple of days passed, Tuesday, and I tried to get the event out of my mind, but I would replay it over and over. That night, my dogs insisted on going outside in the middle of the night. Oh my god. I let them out and they immediately ran to the fence line and started barking like crazy at the woods. Like I said before, not uncommon for Great Pyrenees. Honestly, they will bark at a butterfly fart 10 miles away. <laughs> I finally got them to come back inside. Next day, Wednesday, the caregiver for our neighbors stopped by and asked us if we had seen anyone over by the woods next to the first of the two abandoned houses. I told her I had not and asked if everything was okay. She told me that the dogs barking woke up my neighbor. She looked outside and saw two tall men standing in the woods. I told her we would keep an extra close eye on the house. Later that same day, I saw two young teens heading into the woods by abandoned house number two. I told my husband about it, and he set off across the street into the woods. He found the boys in an old barn and confronted them. He put the fear of God into them, telling them that they were trespassing and he was going to call the cops. They pleaded with him not to call the cops. They weren't over there to steal or vandalize. They lived on the other side of the woods and had seen some weird lights coming from that area, so they were ghost hunting. He told them to head home and stay out of the woods by the houses because they had scared the lady the night before. They were confused and said they were not out there the night before. They were at home, and that's when they saw the lights. We just brush it off as kids being kids. It's not the first time kids have tried to ghost hunt around those houses. In their defense, it seems like a really good place to ghost hunt. That night after we went to bed, I was awoken again. Lying there wide awake, I heard a weird sound. I wasn't scared, just confused by this new noise. I asked myself, was it the sound of cars on the distant highway? No, I'm used to that unique hum. It sounded like music, organ music. Where have I heard that before? Suddenly, my brain placed the sound of the music on close encounters of the third kind. I was just about to wake up my husband. I needed someone else to hear this, and it just stopped. Oh, my God. I had a passing thought of maybe I should look out the window, and that thought quickly turned to, oh, hell no, as I buried my head under the blankets. The next morning, I considered telling my husband about it, but decided not to because it was so crazy. That night, we were watching TV and our dogs started going crazy, barking. It was so intense, we thought for sure those kids were back in the barn. My husband laughed and said, if they want to scare, I will give it to them. He headed out the door and across the street under the cover of night with only the almost full moon to light his path. I sat there on the couch waiting for him to get back from his mission. Out of nowhere, the hair on the back of my neck stood up and I had a deep feeling of dread and worry that something was very wrong. I headed out the door to the side yard just in time to see my husband walking very quickly out of the woods. His face was very pale. He got to me and said, just get inside now. We got inside and sat down and he was still very pale. My hunter slash marine husband, who is very much at home in the woods, was petrified. I asked him what happened. He held up his finger to say just a moment and picked up his glass of sipping whiskey and finished it in one quick drink, poured another, and did the same thing. He finally spoke and said, I don't know what I just saw. 
I heard noises on the far end of the barn, so I was sneaking around the side to scare the kids. I looked around the corner and saw something bent over going through a pile of stuff next to the barn. I yelled, hey, what are you doing? It started to slowly stand up and turn towards me. I froze and then everything inside of me told me to run. I ducked back behind the barn and walked out as quickly as I could. He slowly shook his head and proceeded to say, I don't know what I just saw. It wasn't an animal. It wasn't human. It was tall and very pale in color. I decided to finally tell him about the music I had heard. He just looked at me and said, I don't ever want about this again. Many days have passed and he has held true to his word. Nothing more has happened other than the dogs barking, whining, laying down and watching the woods. Always watching. When the series of events happened in November, I wrote the above story because I thought that was the end. I wanted to remember the events while they were still fresh in my mind. I thought it was the ending to a creepy story. It wasn't. Early January 2018, my husband and I sat down a little after 8 to watch a movie. We got our drinks and our snacks and settled in. My husband hit play and we were watching the opening scene. Two seconds later, we were watching the closing credits. Oh my God. We looked at each other confused to why the movie skipped to the end. I picked up my drink only to realize it was completely watered down from the melted ice. I have chills right now. That's weird, I said to my husband. He picked up his phone and it was after 11. We lost three hours. If it was just me, I would chalk it up to falling asleep, but not both of us falling asleep and waking up at the exact same time and still sitting in the same position. I don't know where those three hours went. After that, I had a couple in the middle of the night in that space between sleep and awake encounters with a being unlike anything I have ever seen on TV. The most distinctive feature is a bright blue light coming from its head. The things it told me will be a story for another time. Are you kidding me right now, friend? How could you leave us hanging like that? We need to know what it told you. Need to know. Losing time, classic abduction thing. That is crazy. The music is very weird. Oh my God, what a great story. Thank you so much for sharing, but what a cliffhanger. This one is called, A Demon Tried to Unalive Me as My Mom. Hi, Dematrix. Hi. I love your content and the way you make us weirdos feel seen. And I love it when you say in the videos, we believe you and someone in the story doesn't believe the person. Yes, we do. That is our motto in this community. We believe you. By the way, if you want to join the Glitch community, you can join us in Discord. The link is dsc.gg slash ndmatrix. Anyway, I have been wanting to write my story to you for the longest time, but had a feeling that it wasn't good enough to send, but finally, here I am. This is multiple experiences I have had with sleep paralysis, so it is very long, so brace yourselves. The first occurrence I had with sleep paralysis was when I was 9 to 10 years old, and I was living with my mom and brother while my dad was away for work in my mother's hometown, 15 to 20 minutes away from my grandparents at a rented house. It was a school night, so I fell asleep fast, but I woke up not much later. Like it is, I couldn't move, only could see. I saw my mom and my grandma beside me talking, but couldn't figure out what. Then I looked to my other side and saw this dreading thing sitting with its back leaning on the wall, knees up and its hands on it. It was black, shadowy slash cloudy humanoid figure with bright red eyes. I was scared to death and I was screaming for mom to notice, but only I could hear it. After what felt like an eternity, I woke up crying, drenched in sweat. Classic sleep paralysis demon. After this thing, I always felt a bad presence in that house, though nothing actually occurred, but the feeling never left that we were not alone. A few years later, when we were looking for a new place, in the midst of a conversation, I told my grandma about this, and she told me to research about this place. Mind you, my grandma is a very good psychic slash spiritualist, so I did what she said, and I found out that someone was buried right below my room in the 1900s. It was a private cemetery. Yep, I changed rooms after that. Fast forward a few years later, we're in our own built house. And prior to building this house, I made sure with my grandma that this place was safe. So I was now 15 with my very important final exams coming up. One night after studying late, I fell asleep around 2, 3 a.m. Soon after, I felt this heavy weight on my body, especially my chest, and this very bad feeling all over my body that I can't even explain. I tried to wake up, but I was paralyzed, so remembering the prior incident, I looked around, scared, but nothing was present. After a few minutes, this passed away, and I fell asleep. Next day, I told my mom about it, and she said it was because of stress from the exams, maybe. This kept happening for a month or two until my exams were finished. 
But the thing is, I would know beforehand that this will happen that night before I fall asleep. Just like before I fall asleep, that dreading feeling would come over me, but less intense. So I sometimes just tried not to sleep to avoid this. Again, fast forwarding a few months, this happened again, but was way more intense. It started with the same thing that I would know it before it happened, but I brushed it off because it hadn't happened in a while. But boy, was I wrong. I fell asleep and very soon that feeling came over, but it was way worse. The heavy weight I felt was even more worse. Usually I would keep my eyes closed because I knew nothing was there, but this time I had this urge to look and I saw a tall black figure standing right beside my bed, hovering over me. This figure was so bizarre, I couldn't even tell its shape, like it was humanoid, but not at the same time. The next day, same thing would happen, but I opened my eyes earlier this time and I saw it again, but this time coming from the living room through my door and standing right beside me. This was horrifying, so I tried to wake myself up from this, but I couldn't. With continuous weight and that terrible feeling, I wished this episode to be over. After this frequenting for the next few days, I decided to tell my grandma, and she said that something was on to me. Excuse me? What? She explained that some demon or something was sent to me by witchcraft. I asked what I could do to get rid of it, and she said try swearing at it and telling it to go away and praying. So that day, same thing rolled on, and this time I did what she said, and boy, it was angry. The pressure I felt got so intense, I thought my ribs and spine would break, and that feeling got so bad that it led me to having constant migraines. But it truly would end sooner, like it would punish before having to leave. So after this continuing for a few more days, I couldn't take it any longer because it was making me physically sick. I got bad dark circles. People would ask me if I was okay, always feeling tired and irritated, those migraines all the time, etc. Like I would actually look sick. I talked to my mom and grandma that this had to end, and she told my mom to prepare a few things to get me cleansed. Now, it took a few days for my mom to prepare this because it was a list of -of out-of-season things, and meanwhile, it got angrier, like it knew what we were trying to do. That same night when grandma said that, it got even worse. At first, it was the same pressure, the feeling, and it coming into my room and me swearing and praying. But this time, it was something different as I realized I wasn't in my room like I was, but not. It had this dim red light that I did not have and the mood felt different, almost as if I was in a different state, almost as if I was lucid dreaming. After it realized that I knew something was wrong, it touched me. It fucking touched me. It grabbed both my legs and lifted them up so high and down multiple times and I could see it as if it was punishing me for something. In the midst of this, I swore at it to go and I prayed so it slammed me one last time so hard before going away and I would wake up, but not quite because that lucid dreaming feeling would not go, but I brushed it off so I sat up, put my feet on the ground and as soon as I stood up, I was right in bed laying down. This time I knew that it was not over yet, so I tried to fall asleep and I tried to wake up for real this time, and it worked. The next day it was the exact same thing, but then it tried to choke me. The next day it levitated me up into the air and slammed me back on the bed. The next day my mom came into my room to tell me that all the items were ready and we could do the cleansing that day, and I was relieved. That night it happened again, but nothing came. I was kind of at peace, but the next moment I saw my mom come in. Like it was her, but not her, obviously. It was the exact same nightgown my mom wore that night. It wasn't my mom in HD quality. It was black, almost like it was a silhouette of her. Her curly hair and everything was spot on, but it was angry, way more angry than before. It came and berated me for something that I did wrong. It was threatening me and it carried two huge knives in its hands in my mom's form. Luckily, I woke up quick but realized I was lucid dreaming, so I fell back asleep. The next day we did the cleansing and fortunately it stopped. But the lucid dreaming had me thinking that maybe it could not touch me in physical form because I have a lot of protection on me, like rings, armlets, wristbands, etc. So maybe it took me to another state where only my soul would go. And that's why there was no physical signs of the abuse. Anyway, I still have sleep paralysis to this day when I'm stressed, but no being in sight thankfully. Oh my God, what a story. That's an interesting thought. I do agree with that, that perhaps because you are protected in your physical form, it did take you into kind of another dimension, another realm where it could physically touch you. The fact that it looked like your mother is terrifying. Oh my God. Thank you so much for sharing this story.
This one is called Time Loop. I'm not sure if this was a glitch in the Matrix experience or a weird dream experience, but I'll leave you to decide. To this day, I'm still unsure. This happened around my sophomore slash junior year of high school. I'm 25 now, but it's the one experience that significantly stuck with me ever since it happened. Almost every day I came back from school, I would take a nap. This specific day, I was too tired to change out of my school clothes, so I kicked off my shoes and crawled into bed in my tight skinny jeans, no blanket, and closed my eyes. After I had awoken, I didn't remember dreaming. I always dream when I sleep, but I didn't think much of it. I still felt very groggy, but I decided to get up because I had some assignments I needed to do. I sat up, looked at myself in the mirror across my bed, and watched myself scratch my head and stretch. I got up and opened the door of my room. I made a right to walk towards my parents' room to go see my mom and bother her, as I always do. Their door is about 10 steps away. But suddenly, the lighting in the hallway turned very dim, eerie looking. My parents' door seemed so far away before I noticed the hallway was actually stretching, then seemed to be turning. In this moment, I stopped walking and remember feeling the most negative energy wash over me. I woke up in my bed, panting, horrified, glad to be awake from that bad dream. I was still groggy, but didn't want to relive that dream. I looked over at myself again in the mirror across my bed, rubbed my eyes, got up and went to open my door again. When I turned to the right to make my way towards my parents' room, the hallway dimmed again and I immediately panicked because I already knew what was going to happen. And it did. I was looping through that same scenario for at least 10 times. Every time I woke up, it felt so real. And every time I woke up, I felt less and less in touch with reality. When I finally did wake up, I wasn't 100% sure that I actually had. I sat in my bed feeling the same way I had every time I woke up the other times, groggy, confused, nervous, unsure, etc. I contemplated attempting to go to my mom's room again for a long time before I actually got up and did, and finally, there was no more loop. I went in there to tell my mom about it, but I swear it was not a dream. It felt so real, so exhausting. I've had many dreams, many nightmares, but none ever made me question reality or my sanity such as this. Even now, I think back to this day, and I hope I'm awake. I'm not sure if that was some sort of like glitch in the matrix loop or if that was a lucid dream because I have had lucid dreams where I wake up again and again and again back into a dream over and over and over and it is exhausting and it is scary. But I haven't had in my dreams where I wake up in the exact same scenario over and over and over again. So the fact that it was the exact same thing that kept happening to you says to me maybe it was some sort of weird loop. Maybe for some reason there's some weird like portal thing in your hallway because you're saying like you were walking there and then the hallway was stretching and I'm honestly not really sure. I would love to hear what everybody thinks. Thank you so much for sharing your story. This one is called Super Long Haunting Story. Hi. Hi. I love hearing everyone's stories. Hopefully you'll be a little scared by mine. Hopefully not. My name is Jade, by the way. Oh my God. I used to wish my name was Jade. And I think my mom actually almost named me Jade. I'm assuming there has always been a spirit attached to me and my mom as long as I can remember. Buckle up. It's a long, wild ride. It started when I was in second grade. I'm 27 now. So I was like five years old. My mom had just gotten married and we were looking for a new house. We were on the way to pick up my brother one day and we see this gorgeous two-story yellow house with a brown roof. I immediately yelled, Mom, that's the house we need. Fast forward two weeks later and we are moving into that same house. Everything was fine and dandy at first, but weird things started happening. My mom would come and wake me and my brother up in the middle of the night asking why we were standing in her doorway. We would tell her, if you're crazy, we were asleep. I guess she never believed us because she did it constantly. Then it started with my stepdad. He would wake up freaking out saying cold hands were grabbing his legs and arms in his sleep. My bro was at his dad's house, but me, mom, and stepdad were in the living room. To the right of the living room was the stairs, and we had a mirror placed beside those stairs. So if you were sitting on the couch, you could see the stairs in the mirror. All three of us hear a noise and turn our heads to the mirror. We all see a softball-sized black orb come flying down the stairs, and it bounced off the wall and rolled into the living room, but it was gone. I'm sorry, I don't think orbs roll. I have never heard of an orb rolling. Also, orbs are normally white. This is weird. I don't think that was an orb. We could not find it anywhere. Just poof, gone. My twin cousins had come to stay the night. I believe it was in third grade. They woke up screaming around 3 a.m. and begged my mom to take them home. To this day, they never would tell me what happened and would never come back over again. Fast forward, mom and stepdad fighting a lot. I was in eighth grade by this time, and it was two days before Thanksgiving. 
My aunt randomly came to pick me up from school and takes us to our grandparents. My stepdad died in a horrifying factory accident. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. They don't know how it happened to this day. A chain broke and a 2,000 pound mold had fallen on him. I'm going into my freshman year of high school now. My bro, his cousin, and I all decided it would be a fantastic idea to play with a Ouija board. Throughout that whole thing, the spirit had given us a name, which I will never repeat. It said it hated my mom and I, but was fine with my brother. Weird things rarely happen to him. Then it just spelled out fire and 2014. We were getting freaked out and tried to say goodbye. The board flew across the room and we all ran outside. When we went back inside, every cabinet was open and knives were lined up on the counter. Oh, I hate kitchen ghost stuff. It's so scary. To this day, we haven't said goodbye. Well, at least they tried to say goodbye. What happens in that instance? Friends who know Ouija boards, what happens in that instance where you try to say goodbye and you physically can't say goodbye because the board moves out of the way or flies across the room? How do you close the board? A few days later, my mom wakes up to something poking her. It was a knife in her bed. My room started to get really cold even during the summer. To give you an idea of how cold, I could keep canned drinks in my room and opening them would be like they came straight from the refrigerator. One night, I felt a tugging at my blanket and my covers flew off my bed. I froze in fear and couldn't scream for my mom all the way downstairs. Her bedroom was directly below mine. But the covers flying off started happening almost every night. My lights would go on and off. My door would open and close. My brother could sit on his bed and watch this happen all night long. It would scare me so badly, I literally couldn't move. Your brother's just fine with it? He's just like, oh, that's cool? I don't like That's kind of shady, man. I would just try to go back to sleep because it was going to happen regardless. I did sleep downstairs on the couch a lot. So I imagine this is what started my crazy journey with insomnia and night terrors every single time I could fall asleep. It got so bad I didn't sleep for almost seven days straight unless it was a cat nap at school. I was seeing shadows and it was just bad. Some of that might be hallucinations from not sleeping though. Back to my mom's room below mine. She would hear people walking around my room constantly. One day, my cousin and I were chilling in my room. My door opened and my dog started going nuts. We could hear footsteps going towards my cousin who was sitting on my futon. The footsteps stopped right at the futon and you just see an indent form beside her as if someone sat down. Every hair was up on my dog's back. We freak out and run downstairs. Me, bro, and mom were in the kitchen and I was playing fetch with the doggo. I bounced his ball off the wall and a picture above where I threw it started violently swinging back and forth and it continued for about five minutes. I know the story is all over the place, but trauma has made it to where I don't remember every last detail. I've kind of blocked it out for the most part. That's okay. So this is just if you're listening and you're getting confused at all, which I don't think you are because I'm not getting confused. This is just a bunch of all the things. It's like a list basically of all the things that have happened. My kitty and I were laying in bed. Everybody else was asleep already. And out of nowhere, we hear this ticking sound on the roof and an extremely loud demonic roar. My cat freaked out and ran away. But once again, I was frozen in fear. No one in my family ever believed me. Why wouldn't they believe you? If they were experiencing all these things with you, why would they not believe you for that one? That doesn't make any sense. But I'll never forget the sound of it. I know I didn't imagine it. My cat didn't either. I ended up not taking showers at nighttime anymore. Every time I would, the lights would shut off and I'd be in pitch black in the shower. That's really scary. Fast forward to my junior year of high school. My brother and his girlfriend, who live about four hours away, were on the phone and his ceiling fan cords started moving around. He's sitting there telling her what's going on and they both heard a voice in the phone that was not a normal voice saying, don't lie. She ends up moving in shortly after because they are expecting a baby. All three of us and brother's cousin were in the living room. I ended up falling asleep, and when I woke up, it was pitch black and no one was there. I panic and run upstairs, and all three of them are in my brother's room, freaking out. Evidently, they say a huge black figure was standing in the dining room doorway. They left my ass down there for real. Always thought that was so nice of them. In that same week, my brother's cousin ran upstairs to cut the hallway light off. He went to go flick on the light switch, but it happened before he even touched it. Never heard someone run down those stairs so quick. My boyfriend at the time had come over one day. Keep in mind, he said he doesn't believe in ghosts or anything along those lines. He went to the bathroom, and next thing I hear him slam that door open and run outside. He said something lifted his shirt up while he was peeing. That shirt made him a believer. 
I know I'm putting little laughing faces. There are little laughing emojis, but I was kind of used to it at that point. I was always so scared to be at my house. I started staying with my friend every other night. Weird things started happening at her house too. It would follow me. Her dad was home alone one day and the front door opened. He went to go see what it was and their youngest daughter's tricycle was rolling down the hallway. That is so scary. He stopped letting me come over and all the weird things stopped happening. Let's fast forward again to the year 2014. I just graduated. I was 17 and from where my stepdad died, I had SSI checks coming every month and I was able to buy a condo about an hour away from where I grew up. My boyfriend and I had left to go pick up one of our neighbors from work. We were gone maybe 20 minutes, and the roommates I had living there definitely were not there. We pull up and we see orange in the window. We run to the door and my bedroom was on fire. Oh my God, the fire 2014 from the Ouija board. My two dogs suffered from smoke inhalation but were okay after a while. Sadly, my chameleon died in the fire. My whole bedroom, everything I ever had from my childhood, bathroom, and part of my kitchen were completely destroyed. Not a single thing of my roommates got ruined. Just her stuff. Fire investigators never found out what happened, especially since it only spread to my things. Remember, Ouija board had said fire in 2014. I had to move back home. At this point, my mom had ditched the house that we grew up in. She had built me a little tiny home in her backyard. My boyfriend and I had said goodnight to my mom, and we were walking to our little house. She had already closed the door and shut the lights off. Clear as day, we both hear Jade in a low voice, and we thought it was my mom calling my name. It sounded just like her. A few months later, me and my dude were no longer together, and at nighttime, always around 3 a.m., there would be knocks all around the tiny home. I would wake up with a dark figure standing at the foot of my bed. Eventually, I dipped out of there and moved into a trailer. Every night around 3 a.m., I would wake up to my front door wide open. I would make sure to deadbolt it, but it didn't help. I ended up getting a guard dog, but she was just as freaked out as I was. At this point, it didn't scare me as bad, but it definitely bothered me. Fast forward to 2019, I believe, I ended up moving in with this woman I met from work. She had an apartment for rent that was built onto her extremely old house. It was built in the early 1900s. This is when things would really start going nuts and I would be even more terrified than before. How is that even possible? I believe I was 22 at the time. My bathroom messed up and I'd have to go into the main part of the house to shower. Every day in the shower, there alone, I would hear people talking and footsteps. I'd shut the door off and yell, who's home, but never got an answer. I would kind of brush it off, but it got to the point that I'd bring my dog with me or my roommate because I was too scared to shower. I also use the shower upstairs sometimes. One day I get home and everyone is throwing a fit because the upstairs bathtub randomly got plugged in and water came on. And built up so bad, it started coming through the ceiling, and it was a mess downstairs. My roommate was up there by herself and was coming down the stairs and got pushed. It happened about three times to other people, too, so we had a rule that no one was ever allowed to go up there anymore. My two roommates and I were in the kitchen. I was standing at the bottom of those stairs talking to them. One of them was standing at the island, and one was doing the dishes. There were wine glasses on top of the fridge. I had said bye to them and was about to walk back to my apartment. I turn around, but I see something out of the corner of my eye, and I turn back around towards them, and a wine glass came flying at me. Luckily, I moved before it hit me, but its shattered glass was in my leg. Then it starts getting really bad. I can't understand how this keeps getting worse and worse. How is that even? I don't even know. My dog and I were in my apartment. I'm sitting on my bed reading a book and she's beside me. My leg was hanging off the bed and it got super cold out of nowhere and I felt something poke my leg. Doggo looking beside me growling. I brushed it off and got onto my covers and we went to sleep. I always slept on the outside of the bed and the dog against the wall. I started to get poked every night. Eventually, my dog made me switch spots with her so it wouldn't bother me. What a good dog. She also started getting poked. She would jump up and look at her ass and just stare at me like, that wasn't you? I always slept with the TV on, so I had some source of light. Then, every night around 3 a.m., my TV would shut off, and I couldn't get it to turn back on for about 20 minutes every time. Me and my dog would be freaking out. It got so bad, I would wake up with more and more bruises every day, finger-sized bruises. Someone was poking me aggressively in my sleep. I eventually went to go talk to my roommate about it, and before I could get the words out, she says, you've been getting poked, haven't you? And I'm just looking at her like, bitch, what? 
At this point, all three of us and their kids are scared as fuck every day, and we basically had a buddy system to go around the house. One of them got scratched. I'm sorry, did this stuff happen before you moved in, or did you bring this stuff with you again? One of them got scratched. Then one night I was texting one roommate telling her how scared I was that I was frozen in fear and couldn't come to her, basically begging her to come back to my apartment. She said, okay, I'll come. Then everything goes black. About 12 hours later, I wake up not really remembering what happened. Read all the texts and she's like, hello, where are you? Are you okay? What's going on? She told me that she ran and got my other roommate and they came into my room to make sure I was okay. They said I was asleep. My dog was cowering in the corner of the bed, but I was gripping my phone as tightly as I could and I was gritting my teeth and they watched me start convulsing. Both of them were shaking me, screaming my name, but I wouldn't wake up. The convulsing finally came to an end and I started snoring like I was peacefully sleeping. 12 hours later, I'm awake and okay. Later that week, my TV had shut off again and instead of trying to turn the TV on, I threw my blankets over my head and pretended to be asleep. I hear a demonic voice in my head. I know you're not fucking sleeping. You will be soon enough. And I fell asleep. I'll never forget that voice. My roommate also had a similar experience where she would hear the voice in her head. After some talking, we decided to try to get help. Oh my God, it took you long enough. We found a Native American guy and he was going to come investigate and see if there was any way to help us. He came around 7 p.m. the next night. There was a sunroom in my apartment and all three of us were sitting out and waiting for him. He pulls up and both of them leave to greet him. I stayed back with my dog. I started hearing rusting outside the window to my left. My dog was on high alert. Then I hear the same demonic roar I heard as a kid again. My dog yelped and ran whimpering into the apartment. I ran with her. I was too scared to go outside then, so I tried calling them. Both of them had left their phones on the table in the sunroom. About 30 minutes go by and they finally come back into the apartment with the dude. I'm in tears and they're confused and I tell them what happened. I was talking to the native guy about the experiences I had and the dreams and convulsions, which did happen more than once. It happened as a teenager too, just not as bad. My mom would think I was seizing in my sleep. Doctors could never find an explanation and gave me muscle relaxers and sleep meds, spontaneous muscle spasms, they would call it. Anyways, I told the guy I had always felt like I was going to end up being possessed one day. His response was, that has been happening in your sleep and the spirit that's attached to you has been trying to possess you, more like a demon. He said that's why the night my roommates were in my apartment and I was convulsing, it was trying to possess me. At this point, I'm in shock. I told him he shouldn't have said that to me. He tells us he's going to speak to his elders and see what they can do. The next day we wake up to message him. He blocked every single one of us and never spoke to us again. We saged the house ourselves, but it didn't seem to help. A couple of days go by and my roommate and her husband are starting to argue more and more. I get a call one day and she's crying, saying she got home and her husband was in the basement and had hung himself. Luckily, she got him down in time and he is okay. What? I had too much fear by this point and ended up moving out. One of my roommates grew up in that house and weird things had always happened to her. Okay, so things did happen before you moved in, but you didn't help because you had that thing attached to you. We kind of came to the conclusion that we both had an evil spirit attached to us and they kind of collided when I moved in. I found a cute little one bedroom apartment and I'm living by myself. Every day when I go to work, I have my phone, keys, and whatever else in my hand. I would get to work and one of these objects would be gone. I started dating a guy and he's like, nah, you're crazy. But it started happening to him as well. We would literally check our hands before leaving yet always would have something missing. We would get home and it would be sitting on the counter. I know I haven't said this part and it's all over the place, but all my life since this started happening, I would take my clothes off in the same exact spot, yet some material of clothing would just disappear. Objects constantly moved around. At some point, I had become so used to all of this, it doesn't really bother me anymore. It kind of just died down one day. I still have nightmares, insomnia, cabinets opening, and randomly things disappearing, but not how it was at that house with my two roommates and their kids. When I say nightmares, I could literally write horror books from those extremely vivid, gory, repetitive dreams. One I had as a teenager was my grandma sacrificing my cousin to give you some context. That's basically it for this story. Sorry it's so long and all over the place. During all of that, I was extremely depressed and isolated myself because if I didn't isolate, it would also happen to the people around me. Thank goodness over time I learned how to deal with it. I don't let it control me anymore and my life is pretty great. It still messes with me and my mom sometimes, but we are used to it. To this day, I will not take a shower at nighttime. 
We still have not said goodbye on the Ouija board. I'm trembling as I write this. I hope you enjoy the story. It is 100% true and authentic. There are probably some things I'm leaving out, but I know it's a jumbled mess already. If it ever starts happening to a crazy extent again, I'll be sure to send you another email. Thank you so much. Much love. Holy smokes, was that a ride? Have we tried any more times to cleanse ourselves, get the thing detached from ourselves, cleanse the places that we're at? Because I would be hard on that until this thing went away. It needs to go away. And I'm glad that you're in a better place than you were previously, but still, oh my God, what a crazy story. Thank you so much for sharing. This one is called Alaska Ghost House and there's pictures. Hi, DM. Hi. That makes me feel like I'm in uh, <laughs> Wizard of Oz. I've been around for a while now. Original OG. You're an OG glitch. Woo. Love your videos and watch them all the time. Little backstory. About seven years ago, my then boyfriend and I lived at my parents' house while my mom and dad were down in Washington because my mom was sick and had to have a kidney transplant. So we took care of their home. Our house was built in the 1960s and is pretty much located between two cemeteries. One is a military cemetery and one regular but very old cemetery. And sadly, lots of children graves. I have always felt that this house has spirits. Our bedroom was downstairs and it was an old hot tub room so it had two closet doors instead of a regular door. So it had those little slots that you could see through when the doors were closed. To the right of our doors was a wall. Many, many times I would see someone or something walk by the doors, but walking right into the wall. So many times this would happen that I asked my then boyfriend that was good at with carpentry to take out the closet doors and make them a regular door there. Before that could happen, one night I had closed the closet doors and I had hung up a large blanket over the doors to stop seeing these things walk by. As I turned around, something grabbed the bottom of my pants from under the door. As I turned to see what it was, a face was pushing itself by my face through the blanket. Oh my God. I turned to look at my boyfriend. His eyes were wide open. I freaked, screamed, and jumped in bed. We were so scared, pushing each other to go see what it was. I wanted to make sure that the door was closed, so I got up and I pushed the blanket back, and yes, the door was closed. The next day, he started working on the new door, LOL. I have also walked past my dark laundry room many times and heard, Mommy? Nope. <laughs> oh, hard nope. One time, it sounded just like my daughter. When I go ask her if she called, she hadn't. Remember, many children died and were buried in that cemetery. As my daughter got older, she too had many stories to tell. I will have stuff taken, and when I get frustrated enough, it will show back up, like the TV remote. I looked everywhere for it. I pulled all my blankets off my bed, nothing there. I walked out in the living room and checked everything and then walked back in my room, and there it is, sitting in the open on my bed, right where I had already checked. I have caught a face on camera as well and will attach it to this email. Now, I used to party a lot and my life wasn't as stable as it is now. My parents moved back after my mom had a successful kidney transplant. So thankful. She also had a heart transplant 23 years ago now. She has very strong faith as well. When they moved back in and my life got more stable, it seemed that the activity slowed way down. That makes sense 100%. When I took this picture I'm attaching, I immediately saw the face. And when I checked that area, there was nothing there that could have made it. Nothing. You can even see on the left side the blanket I had hanging up before the new door. I'll attach a close-up picture of the face too. Thank you so much for taking the time to read this and for the safe space you created for all us glitches. Thank you for sharing it. Let's look at the picture. This is the picture. Here's the blanket that she hung over here. This is the face. Look at that. Wait, there's a close-up. Look at that. That definitely looks like a face. It looks like a and eyes like this, right? And like half the mouth with teeth. And this looks like an ear. Like that legit looks like a face. That's really weird. And why is it like so low to the ground? I don't like it. Nope. Thank you so much for sharing your story, but nope. This next one is called No Manned Car. Hi, Andy Matrix. Hi. I've watched so many of your videos. I wanted to share my experience to try to gain some sense of what happened. For context, I'm 18. I live in a somewhat small town about an hour away from Austin, Texas. That's important. I never was a full believer of the paranormal or anything like that until the accident. The accident? What accident? So I'll start from the beginning. I worked two jobs for a long while to buy myself a motorcycle, 2015 Suzuki 250. After getting my license at 15, I got my driver's license at 16. And yes, you get your motorcycle licenses in Texas at 15. That is crazy. I drove that bike quite often to the restaurant I worked at when the weather was nice and my car when it wasn't. 
I was still in high school, 17 and a senior at the time, and would usually work a 4 to 11 shift and then drive home in the dark. My town was pretty safe, so me driving my bike home wasn't a problem. The restaurant that I worked at was also on the main road, just a two minute drive from my house. One day when I was driving to work, I saw this old red pickup truck that had looked like it had taken quite the beating, driving down the road in the opposite direction. Living where I lived, it wasn't uncommon to see trucks or cars dinged up, but what caught my attention was the fact that no one was driving the car. I brushed it off as me driving fast on my bike or my helmet, just obscuring my view of the truck. A few weeks passed and I thought nothing of the truck until I saw it again. Same situation, driving the opposite direction on the main road with no one inside. That's when it freaked me out. When I got to work, I asked my manager at the time if he's ever seen the car with no one inside. He laughed and accused me of lying. I don't really blame him, saying that I was just going crazy. After that, I kept it to myself. But then I kept seeing the old red truck more and more, always going in the opposite direction of me and only when I'm riding my bike. I would be going to school or anywhere else and I'll see it, but no one else seems to notice the no-manned car. I thought I was just going crazy for months, but still never told anyone out of fear that I would be laughed at. We believe you. I'm a huge fan of the show Supernatural. Yes, me too. And wanted to go to a convention they were at in Austin. I'm going to one in New Jersey. I remembered that I pleaded with my parents to let me go to that convention to see them saying that I'll do anything to go. And after a while of begging, my parents finally let me go by myself. One of my arguments is that I'm 17 and will be going off to college soon. So I got to learn to go long distances on my own. My car at the time was in the shop for routine maintenance. I had a crappy old car and my parents were both at work. So that left me with my bike. Driving into Austin in the middle of the day was fine. And I managed to make it to the convention safe and sound. I had a blast there and stayed for the whole convention until it closed. It was quite dark out when I left, but thought nothing of it as Austin is always really lit at night and just drove home on my bike. Driving out of the city, the road that led to my hometown grew dark and windy. I've driven on that road multiple times and know it like the back of my hand. And with the help of my headlight, I was able to safely zip down the road. There's one particular sharp turn you can't really see if something is coming in the opposite direction because of the angle and the hill that blocks it. Right when I was turning, a car had ran into me going I don't know how many miles per hour. I never saw his headlights and never heard him coming around the corner. I can't remember a lot of what happened in the crash, but I do recall how the car that hit me had driven away in a hurry, leaving me to die on the side of the road. When I was about to lose consciousness, the last thing I remembered seeing was an old red pickup truck pulling on the side of the road where I had crashed. The next thing I knew, I was in the hospital with multiple injuries and no idea how I got there. My parents told me that the nurses said someone had driven me to the local hospital in an old red pickup truck. I remember my heart dropping the moment my parents mentioned that red truck. I begged for my parents to grab a nurse that was there when the truck dropped me off. It caused a little concern for my parents, but they got a nurse anyway. The nurse that I spoke to described the truck exactly as I remember seeing it. Pull up in the area, the ambulances usually drop off patients and that an older looking man had carried me in. According to the nurse, he never spoke a word and seemingly disappeared when he knew that the doctors would take good care of me. I don't understand how I was seeing a no man car for months, only for the driver of the car to bring me to the hospital in my time of need. To this day, I haven't seen the truck and no one could identify the man that had saved me. I don't know if he was some kind of guardian angel or something else, but I hope you can help me make sense of everything. This is what the truck kind of looked like, only solid red and busted up. We're going to look at it real quick. So basically like an old red pickup truck. I'm 100% going guardian angel or some higher being, ancestor, angel, whatever, was protecting you and took you to the hospital so that you would live. The weird thing is that you were seeing this truck with no one in it for so long because I feel like normally they'll show up when they're needed. It seems like in this case, he wasn't sure when he was needed. He knew that something was going to happen, but he didn't know when. So he just kept driving around past you whenever you were on your bike, which is really weird. So maybe it's not like an angel or something. OK, wait, stick with me. Maybe it's like you from another timeline or the future or something. I don't know. I'm totally making that up, but that's a cool theory, right? This was a great story. Thank you so much for sharing. This one is called, what does this mean? Hi, Matrix. Hi. I don't know who to ask this question to because it's insanely odd, but I need to know what this means. All right, we'll try. I'll start by saying I'm a very organized person who is extremely vigilant about maintaining awareness in my life, including the organization of all things in my home and vehicle, even down to what I have in my pockets and bag at all times. The day in question when I change into my sweats that I wear around the house all the time, I went to empty my pockets as I normally do before laying down. And this is where it gets funny. I felt something crunchy. 
in the large lower cargo pocket, and I thought, that's odd. I don't recall putting anything in that pocket. Not to mention, it's Velcroed shut, and I never really use those pockets. But lo and behold, I pull out a small wreath of dried lavender. I do not own a wreath of lavender, nor have I ever seen one before, and I wear these sweats all the time. Now, I'm sure you can imagine I was very freaked out about this. I asked my landlord if anyone was over to my unit and maybe left it behind. She said no. My parents are the only ones with my door codes besides my landlord, and they were with my grandmother all day. The night prior, I patted down all of my pockets as usual before laying down for bed and put the contents of it on my nightstand so I know they were empty the night before. The next day, I just went to work, came home, grabbed the sweats from where I left them neatly folded on the beanbag corner beside my bed and put them back on. My unit was locked the whole time. Then when I went to lay down for a nap, I patted my pockets down again and made this discovery. I can't seem to think of why this possibly could have appeared in my previously emptied sweatpants, but I have a few thoughts. When this occurred, I had just recently started a new job after being unjustly fired from a truly toxic employer and have really turned a corner with my life and my sobriety as well. I am frequenting trauma therapy and working through my past traumas. So many things I've wanted are coming to fruition with me. I started a good paying job at a wonderful company and I was just thinking as I was driving back home just before donning these sweatpants that I'm so happy to see the energy I've been putting out into the world coming back to me. I was thinking all of those things, and then I came home to this gift of a lavender wreath in my pants pocket that I do not own, nor did I put there. What on earth does this mean? Also, that same day happened to be the date of the Ring of Fire Eclipse. Please note, I did not get a bad feeling about the wreath and have kept it in my room ever since. Any thoughts would be appreciated, though. I have included a picture of the wreath and exactly how it looked at the moment I pulled it out of my pocket. Many thanks. Okay, look at this wreath. Okay, this is a wreath. That 100% is a wreath, and it does look like lavender. It also actually kind of looks like there's a pentagram in the middle. Does that look like a a pentagram to you? Look, like this... It kind of looks like a pentagram, right? Hmm. I wonder if this is a symbol for something. And what would leave a wreath of lavender? I'm going to try to look it up. Okay, so apparently lavender has protective properties. And in making a lavender wreath is one way to help ward off evil spirits. Okay, I'm also seeing that a wreath with a pentacle in it is also used for protection. So that was put there for protection. I wonder if, I don't know who put it there, but I wonder if they put it there to help you since you are really working on yourself and you're getting rid of a lot of things and you've really like leveled up. And because you've leveled up, all the good things are coming towards you. Maybe someone put it there to help protect against anything from deterring you from your path. Or perhaps because I do believe that when someone is in a really bad place emotionally, it could have to do with something being attached to them. Or maybe you're doing so good and maybe someone or something is trying to protect you from anything that might try to mess you up. But who put it there? I am honestly not sure. This is very interesting. But the good news is, is it's a good thing. That's why you didn't get a bad feeling from it, right? It's for protection purposes. But where did it come from? Does anybody have any ideas on this? I need to hear the ideas in the comments. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And I wish you so much luck. I hope things keep getting better and better for you. This one is called, I died and came back to an alternate universe. Hey, Andy Matrix. Hi. This is a bit of a long one. This happened in 2018, and it is by far the scariest, craziest experience I ever had in my life. I truly thought I was losing my mind, and it was little things that accumulated over a short period of time that convinced me I died and came back in an alternate universe. I always thought about the multiverse theory growing up, but I never imagined I would experience it firsthand. One day I was at a woman's apartment that I didn't know very well. I remember getting into an argument with her over something small, and she threatened to, you know, shoot me. I remember calling my mom while having a panic attack and telling her I needed her to come get me immediately because I was terrified and this woman was threatening to kill me. She was at work and said she couldn't get to me until she got off of work and the woman I was with apologized and told me to come back into the apartment and wait for my mom. I didn't hang with the best crowd when I was in my early 20s and I don't remember what happened after she gave me some food to eat and something to drink. This was around 8 to 9 a.m. Around 6.30 p.m., I woke up in the hallway of her apartment building with only my phone that had less than 10% battery on it, no ID, and about $10. No idea how I got there. I tried finding the woman's apartment to find out what happened, why I passed out in her hallway alone, but I called my mom again and begged her to come because my phone was almost dead and I was stranded without my car. Sounds like she drugged you. I was so confused and disoriented, and after that day, I started noticing huge differences in my life. 
I tried going to a gas station I went to for years down the street from my parents' home, but it wasn't there and neither was the Ulta store next door. It was on the opposite side of the highway. I was so confused because I grew up in the city and I knew all the street names, so it made no sense to me. Even my Google Maps said it was where I thought it was until I got to the light and then it disappeared and told me to go to right across the highway. That previous day, I remember going into my bedroom and nothing was right slash in the place I knew they were supposed to be in. The light switch was on a different wall. The outlets were in different spots. This also made me panic because, again, I grew up in this house. My family would always say I had baby feet because I wore a size 5 and could fit into kids' shoes even at 20 to 21. And about a week later, an old friend of mine brought me some Nike shoes that didn't fit her that were a size 8. And I laughed when she gave them to me and said that they would be way too big because I wore a size 5 in Nikes. Nope. I was wrong. I wore a size 8 and my parents said I always wore a size 7 or 8 and that my sister was the one with the baby feet. Even the moon looked different. I would spend every night looking up at the sky trying to see if I could spot UFOs and constellations like the Big and Little Dipper lying in the trunk of my dad's car growing up in front of our house. I even have memories of trips to New York and seeing the Statue of Liberty and going all the way to the top only to see the photos were gone. And my parents telling me we never went up the day we visited and that people weren't allowed to go up to that area for decades now. Both my parents are history majors and I loved history as well. I remember learning about the Lindbergh baby, how he was kidnapped and never found, and that decades later people were claiming that they were the missing child and learning about it my senior year of high school in 2014. I remember thinking how awful it must have been not to know where your baby was for decades. And then I found out that he was found soon after and the kidnapper was caught. This is when I kind of lost my cool. I broke down to my mom and dad about what was going on. My mom looked at me like I was insane, but my dad believed me. He said something very similar happened to him when he got into a motorcycle accident in his early 20s, where one of his best friends died and he almost died as well. I still have the messages between me and my dad the day that I told him about all of this and his messages were so reassuring. He told me even if I did in fact die in another reality that I've been given another chance in this one and to make the best out of it, which I intend to do 100%. Now I have a wonderful husband and a daughter, but man, does it freak me out when I stop and think about all the different things and my memories that are so vivid in my mind that never happened. Another weird thing is I used to have a great memory, but I feel like my memories from before that date fade more and more every day, almost as if my life hit the restart button hard that day in 2018 and wiped out a lot of the past except for a few things. I even tried finding my high school boyfriend and it's like he never existed even though my parents remember him, but there's no trace of him anywhere. It's all very weird and scary and definitely feels like a huge glitch in the matrix. That's my world. Yes, I definitely agree that this is a case of quantum immortality, that you did die that day and you hopped over into a very similar nearby timeline. What things are different, I guess it wasn't close enough for it to seem like nothing happened. Like it was far away enough where things were different enough where you were noticing them. And that has to be really scary. But I am so glad that your dad actually went through the same thing and he could reassure you that that probably is what happened. But just like make the best out of your life. I'm so happy that you had your dad for that. Well, it sounds like you're enjoying your life in this timeline. So welcome to this timeline. And thank you so so much for sharing your story. This one is called Glitch in the Matrix or a Tear in Space. Okay, do I have a story for you? When I was in university, I had the strangest experience that I still can't explain nine years later. The building I attended my classes in had this huge concrete spiral staircase that connected all four floors of the building. I will include a picture for reference. Let's look at the picture before we continue. Okay, here is the spiral staircase. So huge concrete spiral staircase. Got it. Let's continue. I commuted to university, so I often tried to compile my class schedule into as few days as possible to save myself gas and mileage. This often meant long days with large gaps of time between classes. Every Thursday, I had the same two classes, the first one at 8 a.m. and the second at 2 p.m. One of my classmates and friend had the same schedule as me that day. However, she had a different class in the afternoon, but with the same 2 p.m. start time. Every Thursday, her and I would leave our morning class and head down to the cafe on the second floor. We would spend our afternoons in a booth on our laptops, studying, working on projects, or just hanging out. Then at 1.50 p.m., we would pack up our stuff, head back up the stairs, and split up at the third floor. She would head to her class, and I would continue to the fourth floor to finish out my day. So one Thursday, we do exactly that. We pack up our stuff, head to the staircase, say our goodbyes at the third floor. I continue to my 2 p.m. class, and at this point, I'm about 10 minutes early, as usual. Normally, I would open the door, and the classroom is semi-quiet with students chatting before the class, but instead, the room is busy, with my classmates participating in what looks like a group activity. 
I walked in super disoriented and sat down at an open table. I opened my laptop and the time on my lock screen said 3 p.m. Confused, I then glanced up at the clock on the wall, which also read three. I had lost a whole hour somehow. Before I could really give it any more thought, my professor called for our 15-minute halftime break and the classroom dispersed. I walked up to him and asked if the class had started earlier than usual today, to which he responded, no. I apologized for being late, even though to my knowledge, I wasn't. He assigned me to one of the existing groups and I finished the remainder of the class. As I was leaving the classroom, I texted the friend I had been with during the break and asked her to meet me at the front door of the building. I met her at our agreed spot and asked her, were you late for class? To which she answered, no, early as usual, why? I then proceeded to tell her what had just happened to me and we both stood there at the front door absolutely bewildered. To this day, I still can't explain where that hour went. There's a few things that normally account for a time loss. One of them is aliens, but I do not think you got abducted in the middle of a school day in the middle of the school because that's not normally how that happens. I'm going to say also maybe there was a portal. Maybe you just like hopped into a portal and it transferred you an hour ahead. Maybe. Probably not. Maybe you like switch timelines somehow. Good old just glitch of the matrix. I'm going to just honestly, I'm just going to call this one a good old glitch of the matrix. That is so weird. It has to feel so disorienting and so weird to have lost a bunch of time and not understand why. We're calling it glitch of the matrix. Thank you so much for sharing your story. This one is called my grandpa told me it was time for my grandma to come home. Oh my God, am I going to cry? Is this one going to make us cry? Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. I watch your videos from the very beginning. Yeah. I love an OG glitch. Almost every night when I lay down, I watch all your videos. I'm fascinated and bummed. I haven't really had anything spooky, glitchy, or weird happen to me. But then in September, it happened. In less than two years, I lost all four of my grandparents. November 11th, 2021. August 31st, 2022. March 29th, 2023. October 8th, 2023. My grandpa, my mom's dad, had been battling bladder cancer for the past year at 87 years old. This man still went to work two to three days a week and took care of his wife of 67 years. She never had to get a job or even drive a car. He lived for that woman. My grandmother suffered from Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, severe osteoporosis, asthma, recurrent pneumonia, and awful anxiety. She was a very fragile woman, both physically and emotionally, but my grandpa was such a generous man and is the reason that she lived as long as she did. March 10th, we had a meeting with the surgeon to decide if he was going to undergo the full bladder removal operation or other options as the previous treatments were unsuccessful. I was on FaceTime while I was on a break at work. The surgery was already scheduled for March 30th. The meeting was to answer all the questions we, the family, and my grandpa had. Other options were given, but my grandpa, knowing he would not have made it out of the hospital from that surgery, said he wanted to go through with it. He didn't say this, but we all knew he said to do it because he just wanted to get better to take care of my grandma. He had two back surgeries and both knees replaced in 2019 and 2020 so he could continue to care for her. That night, he got very, very sick. An ambulance was called in the early morning hours of March 11th. He was in septic shock from his catheter getting lodged into the right ureter, the tube that delivers pee from your kidneys to your bladder, from the tumors in his bladder. He was in the ICU for about a week on continuous dialysis. He had a heart attack. While this was going on from the stress of the infection, his body was done. Fortunately, he never went on the ventilator, which was a big concern. I myself am an ICU nurse, and I know the outcomes less of someone his age and deteriorating health coming off the ventilator. I FaceTimed him daily as he was slowly slipping away. I was coming home in a few days, but I moved it up a day because it was touch and go. I made it there, and he was out of the ICU and in a step-down room until he was ready to go home. I finally arrived, and when he heard my voice, he opened his eyes and smiled. He was trying to talk, and he was so weak. Ultimately, I made out what he was trying to say. He wanted a cup of coffee and to go home. He loved his coffee. He was in there for about a week and a half until the palliative team meeting happened after he just wasn't improving. Once again, I'm on FaceTime since I'm back in Texas at work. There was a discussion of him needing an IVC filter placed due to all the blood clots he was having from the cancer and just being in bed for two weeks. They asked my opinion and I said, no procedure, nothing else, just get him home so he can see his wife and drink a cup of coffee. The last sight my grandmother had of him was getting taken out by an ambulance. I am lucky to have a family that truly listened and carried out their parents' wishes, did not allow them to suffer, and gave them a passing that people deserve, pain-free and surrounded by their loved ones. As an ICU nurse, I have seen families selfishly and intentionally choose themselves over their dying family member, whether that's because of a check that would stop coming in or they don't want to understand the severity of their loved one's illness and there is no room for recovery and a true quality of life they would have wanted. I've also seen the beauty and true love and respect of families for their loved ones when making the hard decision to let their loved ones go. 
A doctor once said to a young girl who had to make the impossible decision for her mother who was dying from cancer, We have a unique opportunity where we have the ability to control how someone dies. That chance does not come often. What a heavy sentence to say to such a young girl, but that has stuck with me and it is so true and so rare. I think that helped me through losing all of my grandparents because we were able to give them what they would have wanted and deserve. I knew he was not going to make it more than two weeks. He wasn't eating, nor had he been. The cancer had spread. It was time. That was a Friday. He went home that night. I FaceTimed him daily, and he died that following Wednesday on his 88th birthday while holding his wife's hand and surrounded by his children. I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it home for his funeral because flights are so expensive, especially buying them a few days before. That week, I just so happened to work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and his funeral was on Wednesday. I had a very, very slim chance of being able to find a plane ticket under $1,000 and that left after 8 p.m. since I worked 12-hour days. On the Sunday before, I found round-trip tickets for $330. The flight leaving Tuesday night at 9 p.m. I was meant to be there. He looked so peaceful. My grandma just broke my heart. I did not understand why she was the last one left. She was already so fragile. This was sure to break her, and it did. Six months later, she would be with him again. This time, I was told it was her time. The end of September, my parents and my brother and his fiance and my husband were all going on a quick beach vacation for my parents' 33rd wedding anniversary. The day my husband and I were flying to Florida, I woke up in tears. I have had many episodes of lucid dreaming. Dreams I would bet money on were real, but this one was the most vivid and I felt everything. The warmth of my grandpa's hug, just like I had felt a month before he passed. My mom's side all had RVs and campers and would go camping all the time during the summer months. Just a campground close to their house and they would just drink and eat and spend time together. It was my grandma and grandpa's favorite thing. The only part of the dream I remember to this day with such clarity. My grandpa and I were walking towards each other, his RV in the background. He was smiling and I could see his mouth moving and I know he was saying something but I couldn't make it out. I did hear him say, my girl, and hugged me so tight like he always did. The warmth I felt was incredible and I wish I could somehow feel that every day. Next thing I know, I'm awake. My pillow is soaked with tears. I texted my mom when I woke up and told her. I told her I wonder what he was saying as he was walking towards me. That same day, my uncle called to let my mom know that my grandma was in the hospital again. This was pretty much the norm for the last five months, pneumonia again. I told him hospice, she doesn't have much time to get her home and comfortable. I knew in that moment that in my dream, my grandpa was telling me that he almost had everything ready for my grandma to come be with him, and her time on earth was coming to an end. Though I had known for a while, he came to tell me so that I could prepare for the impact that I no longer have living grandparents. That Sunday, once we were all back in our respective states, a call came in that my cousin on my mom's side tragically died in an ATV accident. The following Sunday afternoon, my grandma passed away at 91, comfortably and surrounded by her children. I was so truly lucky and fortunate to have almost three decades of my life with my grandparents. I know this is not something that a lot of people get. Thank you for reading my story. It was truly therapeutic to type this all out, even though I have told it out loud many times. There is something different about writing stuff out. I knew this one was going to be an emotional one from the name of it. Thank you so much for sharing your story. That concludes our creepy compilation for today, even though it wasn't all creepy. If you like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications for the next video. And if you want to keep it going right now, you can check out this video or this playlist.